My name is Sunburnt Rhapsody, and welcome back to Slay the Spire. The High Ascension Heartbreaker Chronicles have officially ended. It's over. We did it. We beat the heart. The final optional fourth floor final boss, fourth act rather, final boss, uh, in the game with every character on Ascension 20, which is 20 different levels of added difficulty stacked atop one another. Uh, so now what we're going to do is just turn Ascension off forever and then just play in the kiddie pool for a while. No, don't worry, that's actually not going to be happening. We'll go with the Ironclad on Ascension 15. Um, so let's have a little bit of a chat here at the very start, before I start the run, uh, on the future of the series. Because I saw a little bit of uh, almost scad trepidation in the comment section for the previous one. Uh, obviously, there was a lot of delight and a lot of congratulations and very nice things were said and I loved all of it and I was glowing for a couple of days, uh, only some of which was due to the aforementioned sunburn. A lot also was about, hey, so is the series done? Is that like the end of the series? No, not at all. Uh, to, to coin a popular phraseology, uh, that would possibly be career suicide, although this is in the inverse to the original context for that. Uh, I also still love the game, and I don't know if that will ever change. I have always gone really, really deep on singular games. Look at many of my past series, for examples of this, right? Hundreds of episodes on Binding of Isaac across its different expansions. Hundreds of episodes on uh, enter the gungeon. The thing that typically kills a game for me is inability to have something to strive for. I don't have any remaining object that I'm looking for. Uh, so part of why the ascension grind was so important uh, was for giving that structure. Uh, but then again, the heart came out afterwards and then we did the heartbreaker ascension grind thereafter. So I can understand the question. To reformat the question, it would be, what are you going to do now? Uh, and I'll be doing the same thing that I did before, or rather after Ascension 15 ended, and before Ascensions 16 through 20 came out, which is playing a bunch of different characters and trying to find unique and new different ways to interact all of the different elements that exist in the game. Uh, cards, relics, strategies, pathing, bosses, etc, etc. Uh, in order to find new and unique things and ways of looking at them. Now, the way that I used to do this uh, is exclusively with thin decks. I would look at a card that looks like it might contribute towards a win, uh, a win condition, and then I would try and build a deck that solely focused on that win condition. I think where this will start to go uh, is towards doing that, but with a thicker deck in mind. And a lot of that is because the thicker deck archetypes are things that I typically avoided before I started doing the Ascension Grind. And throughout the Ascension Grind and then throughout Heartbreaker, I've been kind of eschewing the idea of running thinner decks. Uh, while I'll be doing that occasionally here in the kind of afterglow of the highest challenge that I think I will ever encounter in this game because they said they're not including any more uh, levels of Ascension. While I think I will occasionally be doing thinner decks and trying to delve into those playstyles again, uh, I think a lot of what is going to happen is going to be finding different win conditions and different combinations of them in thicker decks uh, that will be particularly interesting. And it's also worth noting that the game is coming out of early access into full release in a couple of days. Uh, and I'll be starting a new series at that point with a new blank uh, file, so I will have to go through all levels of Ascension again. I'm probably not going to redo Ascension 20 Heartbreaker for every different character, but I will have to go through Ascensions 1 to 20 on every single character yet again. After, of course, a little bit of a period of just getting kind of reacquainted with the characters and, of course, unlocking all of their different cards and relics associated. I think that's all I wanted to say. I think if I continued to expound upon it, it would be rambling at this point. 7 max HP for 250. Ooh. You know I want that. Alright. Right. Ooh, there's a path here on the left. One rest, two rest, three rest, four rest, two elites. Mmm. Yes. Get those early upgrades. 
So yeah, the series is going to be kind of faux restarting uh, as the game comes out of early access. That's going to be kind of exciting uh, for me, not only because we'll be doing it on a blank save file, but also the series will restart from episode one. It's just a shame. The timing doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get to episode 500 in this series before we reset. But, you know, that just happens from time to time. It's unfortunate. It'd be really nice if I could have hit that number because it would have just been like a nice... A nice round number just to top off the series. But no, it doesn't look like we will. I uh, definitely don't want Bash. I was looking for the pairing of Dropkick there if I could have gotten it. Yep, throwing the defend as well. Three strikes next turn for the kill. Yeah, somehow I didn't really feel that was going to happen, but... Forgot about the uppercut because we were going into a new deck there. Do I just want to take a Metallicize here? I typically avoid it, but... Not for any great reason. Woo! Airplanes overhead. Yeah, that's on my side. Just abnormally loud. This place has a little worse, to say a little is actually disingenuous, uh, but significantly worse sound insulation from the outside than the previous place. But way better internet, and I'll make that trade every day of the week. Uh, I'm... no, 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 I'll just... What, uh, do I want a blood potion here? Yeah, I'll take it over the ancient potion here. So the Blood Potion is just an instantaneous boost of 6 HP for us because it's 10% of your max HP. Uh, but versus an artifact here in the early game, artifacts don't really do much until the second floor at least. Like, what? Fighting the Gremlin knob? Yikes. Do I want to really triple defend this thing? No, I need to be able to kill this enemy eventually. Yeah, fighting the Gremlin Knob and being able to prevent the vulnerability coming out of them, that's probably the best thing that can be accomplished by a ancient artifact. Ancient artifact? Ancient potion here on the first floor. Ancient potion giving you artifacts, so ancient artifact. Oh, damn. It looks like that's actually going to be relevant. I hate when I foretell my own demise. Looks like we probably will be here for three more turns, so I'm more than happy to kick that in. And we will defend this turn because we're no longer in Ascension 20, so the Gremlin Knob no longer gains three strength every single time we use... An oh! We get to add a card to a deck. That's really cool. Flame Barrier? I mean, I probably will go for the hard in this run if I have the abilities, so sure. Also take the relic that we got there. Uppercut, Flame Barrier, Metallicize. Probably my order here. Bottle Lightning. Upon pickup, choose a skill. Start each combat with a card in your opening hand. So we don't want to do that with Flame Barrier because we really don't want to be ultimately defending on the first turn. Most enemies don't do their most powerful attack on the first turn. And we also have other cards that we want to set up. Putting this in our opening hand steals from us the ability to get Metallicizer in Flame. So we're probably not even going to take the Bottled Lightning. We'll just take the Sapphire Key here. And if the Bottled Lightning was the only thing on offer there, I think I would have avoided it. Okay, this is going to be a really good opportunity to get all of my stuff set up before the boss fight. Before the boss fight. Before uh, even aggroing the boss here. Very hopeful that I get... Mm, didn't get it, but... I was obviously looking for Uppercut there, so that we would, would have had the weakness applied for that turn. The extra attack there, because I think we're... What? Ooh, just a... Would a lucky draw do it? Three strikes? Yes, only just. Ooh, nice hits there. A wriggle Pillow, whenever you rest, heal an additional 15 HP, as well as a Feel No Pain. We have nothing that exhausts in the deck so far, but the Ironclad does have very powerful exhaust synergies. I'm going to go for the max HP here. 
I'm well aware of how powerful Theano Pain is. Uh, yeah, we'll upgrade the Flame Barrier because it can be extremely useful if we happen to get it on the second turn versus the final boss of this floor. Okay. Knowing that I'm about to be weakened, I hit the frontliner target there because in two strikes time, even whilst weakened, they'll be dead. Um, but I guess I could just go... We're taking a lot more damage than I'm comfortable with. A lot of that is because the most powerful defensive card that we've opted to take in this deck so far uh, did not appear in our first shuffle there, which was just abhorrent. Well, it did, but only when neither enemy was attacking. Hey, here we go. See, now we're in such a better position. And next turn, we have the ability to target either of these. Beautiful. Attack Potion versus Feel No Pain Combust Hemokinesis. I'll skip there as well. This is a situation where I'm really looking for an AoE from this Attack Potion. I'll do it. Obviously, it's not doing everything that I want, but God, it got a lot of it done. And we're Gucci. Whew. Perfected strike. Oh. Maybe. I usually cut strikes from my build, but I haven't even cut one yet, so. Do I take? No. We still don't really have an archetype for this build. I don't want to heal here because obviously I don't want to have higher HP as we go into the Hexagos fight. All right. 50-50 now. The, the flame barrier is in the right hand for us. It is not. That's saddening. So what? That would have been 6 by 6 36 damage to the enemy if they just happened to hit against my flame barrier there. Hey, works here though. Solid 12. It's going to be really good against the heart, though. I wonder if it's just too block inefficient to take as a card outside of considerations for the heart. I don't know. I should probably only pop the blood potion if I think I'm actually going to be passing away that turn. This is really unfortunate because, yeah... We're actually probably dead here. No kidding. It look yeah, I'm about to be attacked for Oh no 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 no. I can full defend. I can full defend. Only just though. All the burns in the deck are upgraded. Two more burns in the next hand. Three. Okay, yeah. Rather try and live through that turn. All right, well, we live through this turn as well, but good lord, do we not look long for this world. Bunch of burns in the next shuffle as well. Oh gosh, that's an awful hand. I actually needed about that much defense just to survive. And yeah, we're dead. Yikes. That was a lot worse of a first floor and boss fight than I really expected to have. Taking an early feed here, more than happily. I mean, I even chose like the safest path that I possibly could have considered at that point. Maybe I was just choosing really inefficient cards for their effect. Hmm. Just trying to keep in mind, uh, sorry, rather, keep an eye on what has made me lose different runs, right? So then I can later come back with the lessons I've learned and rectify it. Shrug it off, definitely. I'll lose the 7 max HP there pretty happily just because I have the feed in my deck. 
So backliner target here has 23 HP, frontliner has 18. Because I can't kill them in a single hit, so I have to trigger their curl up. Uh, so that means that I can kill the frontliner with strike, strike, feed. And I should as well. Should I? I could just double defend here. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty likely to go back through my whole deck over the course of this fight, so... I shouldn't lose out on the ability to use feed. And I don't. Okay. Second stroke it off. That's really powerful. This early. Uh, I don't want to go to a shop at this point. I don't have any money to spend. It's not like I'm... You know, we, we've spoken about this before. The fact that you view relics when you go to a shop and then those relics don't appear in the run later because you saw them in the shop and then does that mean you shouldn't go to shops if you don't have enough to buy a relic? No, it doesn't because those relics might have well been at the bottom of the relic pool if you consider the relic pool to be like a deck that you're drawing the top card of. It doesn't matter. You're equally as likely to throw away trash relics as you are to throw away good relics, or rather you're equally as likely to throw away the relic you're looking for as you are to throw away cards before the relic that you're looking for, or relics before the relic you're looking for. So it doesn't matter. It does not matter. It's like if you have a deck of randomly shuffled cards and you take the card from the top or the card from the middle, it doesn't matter. They're equally random. It doesn't matter until they turn over. Um, but I wouldn't go there because I'd like another card choice. That's why I want to go for another store. Sorry, another store, another fight. This is kind of like a little bit of a bridging episode uh, in that this is the kind of tone that I'll be taking for... I know I know this isn't you know, strikingly different to my standard tone, uh, but this is the kind of tone that I'll be taking for especially the first few episodes of the next series and that is reintroducing concepts that i might have uh, gone into before uh, but could possibly help people new to the series which uh, especially because it will be starting from episode one and it'll be on a channel that you know is already reasonably well ingrained uh in the scs community uh I feel like I should probably repeat some of those points. Just for anyone new. I won't go overboard like, and this is an attack card, right? Because I don't feel that actually helps people learn just a dump of information. I think the best method is just play the game. But also make sure to note when anything is uh, counter to the intuitive. Let's say. Get these feeds off easily. Feel no pain. Molten egg. Whenever you add an attack card to your deck, upgrade it. All right. Well, as soon as I see that on the ironclad, I immediately start thinking, mm, okay, how many strikes can I get in this deck? Give me the perfected strike deck. Oh, come on. You gotta. 11. Yikes. We're one short on killing that acid slime here. Yikes. This is really annoying because the looter is doing damage this entire time. And now I'm not even going to get my feed off on anyone. Ugh. O lane. There was no draw from those shrug it offs that would have helped. Body slam? I mean, we do have two shrug it offs in the deck. Can't take clash. You basically just can't take clash into anything past Ascension 10. Uh, and even then, before it, it's definitely super questionable if you intend on going to the heart. Uh, but after Ascension 10, you've got the Ascender's Bane Curse in your deck, which cannot be removed naturally. It's just ethereal, so that means that it burns itself during combat if it's held in your hand at the end of a turn. But that means that Clash is reliably useful in your second shuffle-ish. Let's take the Body Slam here, actually. Uh, but 
is most reliably useful in your second shuffle, and you don't want it to be reliably useful in your second shuffle, because in your second shuffle, you'll start to encounter the different status effects that have been put in your discard pile throughout the course of the first shuffle. At the very least, the Feel No Pain is going to completely override the difficulty of this fight. There's nothing here, basically, at this point for us. 12 free block at the end of a turn. Don't mind if I do. Probably not going to go for an extra elite after this, but eh, we'll see. I will leave feed in the deck because it's totally possible that I end up using it. Okay, three strikes and a body slam left in the deck. So now we've set up that frontliner to be able to be killed by a feed. Do I want to now switch up my attacks? I asked the question as I answer it. I was immediately starting to switch up my attacks. No, I don't need to play the extra shrug it off there. Almost the entire time, I'm just going to be drawing, uh, yeah, another dazed, which is exactly what I ended up drawing. So now if I need to, I can just kill the frontliner sentry and then kill the backliner later. It doesn't matter right now. Oof. So I know that Feed is in the bottom seven cards of my deck because I hadn't encountered it yet, and I had two more turns until I even had to kill the frontliner there. Enemies with Vulnerable take 75% more damage rather than 50% more damage. Uh, I'll take a pre-upgraded cleave. I mean, the important part there is pre-upgraded. If it was not pre-upgraded, I probably wouldn't have taken that cleave. Gambling chip at the start of each combat. Discard any number of cards and then draw that many. Uh, we're going to have a lot of difficulty in the boss fight up here. Just because we don't really have anything to do in it. I'm just gonna like straight up destroy that one. Alright. <clears throat> Feed. Hell yeah, that's all I needed. Sword boomerang pre upgraded. It's a really good way to convey damage when you have strength, but we have none. In fact, other than the upgraded bash and this cleave, we don't really have much that we're going to be able to do in the boss fight. I fear this bodes poorly for us. I still have very little exhaust synergy as well. Probably looking for bash here mainly. That's obviously not what I was looking for. Bash and Feed are left in the deck. Bash, Feed, and Cleave. I'll risk it. I only needed two of the aforementioned cards, and I would have been safe here. Oh, never mind. We got him. The big problem we're going to run into is, like, yeah, 12 damage for one energy here, but then I take four more HP myself. I think I have to do it on this turn, but we're going to constantly be evaluating, okay, how much damage can I afford to take versus how much damage do I want to do this turn? 11 for three as well. Sorry, it's four in Ascension 20. That's what I was referring to. I think I use the block potion here as well. Saves me 12, deals 18 on that turn. Pretty good trade to me. Not bad, not bad. So it does look like we actually will be getting through this fight. I'm still kind of... Uh, 10 and 11. Yeah, we'll actually use both of those. Uh, I'm still actually kind of shocked by the fact that we died to the... The Hexaghost. I didn't think that was going to happen, but we did draw the power card in that deck against that character on the worst turn every time. Which is remarkable. God, are we going to die here, actually? Because 
gosh, it looks like it. This is why evaluating exactly how much every point of HP is worth to you versus the Guardian uh, is very important to do. Because if I had done one more attack at any point, I would be dead now. Do get that one for free, and it looks like I actually will live. Good lord. Yikes. Pre-upgraded bludgeon. Extremely powerful. Would have lent itself well towards a snack OI, but obviously didn't get that. Uh, Sozu, gain energy at the start of each turn. You can no longer obtain potions versus ectoplasm. You can no longer obtain gold. That's Sozu. Just feel typically it's better. Okay. Extra point of energy matters a lot to us because we do now have a bludgeon in the deck. Okay, so Bludgeon doesn't even insta-kill any of these targets. Which is lame, but yeah, still ought to use it. It'll save me a lot of HP over the course of the fight. We're going to need like a Fiend Fire or something to really turn this one around. I say turn it around like we're losing. We're not, but we're not getting better at the rate that you need to to really overcome the difficulty oh flame hell yes i know i just passed up true grit there but in flame oh give me the necronomicon 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 uh the first attack played each turn that costs two or more is played twice that's gonna be double bludgeoning fools all day long uh if i take this ritual dagger it actually immediately upgrades which is nice uh, so now it is deal 15 damage if it kills an enemy. Permanently increases damage by 5. Really reasonable amount right there. So I'm just going to mulligan everything looking for the... Looking for the double bludgeon. There it is. Clothesline. Pre-upgraded into a deck that already has an Necronomicon. Yeah, that's a bunch of turns of weakness right there. Like, uh, let me just... Uh, 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 six! <laughs> it turns out to be six, actually. Uh, I'm actually a little bit caught here. I think the medical kit is ridiculous in Ironclad because there's a lot of cards. That their downside is they give you wounds. In particular, I'm thinking about uh, Power Through. One energy, uncommon skill... Gives you 15 block and 2 wounds in your hand. Upgrades to 20 block and 2 wounds in your hand. A medical kit makes those wounds instantly playable. However, Gremlin Horn, whenever an enemy dies, gain an energy and draw a card, is really good in a deck where you have very, very large single hits. Because the failure of those decks is they cannot deal with things in AoE. Area of effect. But... If you kind of domino kill things, which is to say you kill one, it knocks over, you gain energy and draw a card, so you kind of charge up to knock down the next domino, and you effectively create an effect. Yeah, effectively create an effect. You effectively create, like, dominoes. Uh, it can be really powerful. We will go with medical kit and probably just, like, a removal of a standard strike. We do need more defense in this deck at this point as well. So upgrading those two shrug offs is probably very close to a priority. See, here's a problem. Cleave, feel no pain. Like, Bludgeon, I obviously desperately want to play here. But... I also need to clear out the chumps. If this kills an enemy. Okay, so it doesn't have to kill a non-minion enemy. So, actually a lot more appeasable than I thought. I'll double bash here, actually, rather than double clothesline. The reason for that is now, as soon as I draw into the... Uh, Ooh, hang on. Nice. Uh, as soon as I draw into the bludgeon, it was going to be lethal, but that's okay. Uh, Regal Pillow. Whenever you heal... Whenever you rest, rather, heal an additional 15 HP, as well as a pre-upgraded perfected strike. Now, again, we're going to be getting every single attack pre-upgraded, so every strike. Uh, and Perfected Strike will hit twice, because the Necronomicon. So all we're looking for is defensive options at this point. 
I will be resting here, which I, I hate doing, but really felt necessary. No one's inflicting us with the status effect this turn, just the wounds. One down, two down, three down. Hey, easy elite. War paint upon pickup, upgrade two random skills, and another bludgeon, but actually a Reaper. Double hitting with a Reaper with Necronomicon is so much HP that you return to yourself. Potion belt upon pick up gang two potion slots. I don't think so. I can't even have potions. I'm not allowed. If I allow eight damage through here, I can do no. no. As soon as I compared it, I realized that was a bad idea. Just because we have another card in the deck that would instantly kill this enemy. Cool. I wanted to kill with a Ritual Dagger there. Obvious reasons, so. Uh, don't need any of those. I'm actually going to avoid that next Elite fight. Be upgrading the Shrug it off. Definitely looking for power through. Transform two cards? I don't want to transform any of my strikes. I have removed a strike at this point, actually, which makes that perfected strike worse, but... Uh, I don't want to remove any of my strikes for the perfected strike's sake. I don't want to transform my defense because I do need those defense as well. Uh, I guess I'll just obtain a special relic. That is plus three strength on the first turn, exclusively. Unigenic strength. Quite powerful. I'll go for one more elite. The Emerald deleted this floor. Okay, Book of Stabbing with plus three strength. That is the worst. The absolute worst that we could have gotten. This is remarkably bad for us. I, I'm, consider my gob smacked. Thank heck we got Reaper there. Good Lord, we needed that HP. Toxic Egg? When have you had a skill card to your deck upgrade it? Okay. Probably none of these. They didn't have strike written on them, which makes them a bit difficult to take here. Yeah? We don't really need to upgrade any more cards in this deck at this rate, so I'm just going to rest for the safety versus this boss. Uh, I'm also going to be using the Ancient Potion here in the first turn so that I can keep the three strength that I was given via the Mutagenic Strength. No, I do want to upgrade the Ritual Dagger again. Beautiful. All right. I'm very much looking to start throwing status effects on the enemy here. Just so that I can work through their artifacting. Okay. Scoot in the hood. Enemy does a bunch of damage this turn, but I don't need to take it. Feel No Pain is doing so little work in this deck right now. As much as I want to double the effect of the Reaper. No, I just should. It's the safer option. Uh, doubling up the Bash would enable the Reaper afterwards to heal for 16 versus 22. And I get more damage in. I decided the other way. Mm-hmm. 
Now, ultimately, my goal here is to kill with either the Ritual Dagger or Feed. So, if I can... I would want to do that, but I'm not going to delay. Fiendfire is interesting. So, the problem with Fiendfire in this deck is exclusively that uh, when Fiendfire is double cast with the Necronomicon, it doesn't get the same effect the second time. I know I was arguing earlier how much I wanted a Fiendfire in this deck, but I'm starting now to reconsider that. The reason is Fiendfire does its damage for each card it exhausts. Unless you have some way to reload your hand of cards for Fiendfire to exhaust between the two casts of Fiendfire from say, Double Tap or Necronomicon, whatever is forced to attack twice. Uh, it doesn't do the extra damage. It doesn't, or rather, it doesn't do the same damage the second time. Um, so, ways to refill would be Dark Embrace, the power, the rare power, cost two, upgrades to one that allows you to draw a card every single time you exhaust a card. Another way would be a Dead Branch. Both of those, completely great, good ways to get that done. Uh, but for this deck right now, I'm looking at that Limit Break. Part of the reason I'm looking for that limit break is because I already have it in flame. I, uh, if I get it on the first turn, then I already have mutagenic strength. I have the ability to curate for it on the first turn using the gambling chip. But more than that, I already have the sword boomerang that does extra damage per point of strength four times over because it hits four times for a standard amount increased by strength. Uh, but further more than that, and this is the actual important part, Reaper will heal us for so much. Mm. This is unfortunate. I think what I have to do here is take Pandora's box. Now, three curses and three relics. It could be okay. It could be bad. We've got a deck that's thick enough that we could probably shrug it off those three curses for a while. Not shrug it off as the card, but shrug it off as in not worry about having them. But... They'll catch up to us if we don't have any shops early on in the next floor. Anti Cage, remove two cards from your deck. Eh, what would I remove, right? Two strikes, lowers the power of my perfected strike. Two defends, kills me in most fights. Um, Pandora's Box, though. Yes, it will remove all of the strikes from my deck. Perfected Strike is instantly useless. But it transforms all of my strike and defend cards, and I have a Molten Egg and a Toxic Egg. So all of the cards that are transformed, if any of them become powers, if any of them become powers, they won't be upgraded, but all other cards will be. So I get three powers. Eh, fair enough. Uh, Clothesline, Pommel Strike, Rampage, Impervious, True Grit. Impervious and True Grit are great pickups here. Another Feel No Pain. Eh, depends. Um, Berserk is most likely awful for us. Corruption don't see it maybe in a fight if I know that I'm going to be winning really soon thereafter but we'll see I really do just want to go kind of like reckless elite hunting here on the last floor I would feel so much better doing that if I had a power through already but I don't Dang old game, not giving me a power through when I wanted it. I should have thrown back the Reaper. I had these weird ideas that I was just going to be double Reapering on the first turn for a bunch of damage, but that wasn't going to help me at all, so... Should have just let that one go. Seven block every single time I exhaust a card. Oh, hell yeah. Time to cash in. <laughs> and now we've no block. Yes. Right. Hopefully I get to that Reaper soon. Yeah, there it is. And we managed to heal almost back to full. Seeing red? I mean, we only have one energy relic in the entire deck, and we do have a lot of quite expensive cards. I'll take a single copy of seeing red. Not many more than that, though. I do like body slam here, actually. 
because I am definitely going to be trying to defend quite powerfully here on the first time. Got him. Second body slam? No. The deck can't support it anymore. Uh, that iron wave is actually looking pretty good right now, though. Just as a little bit of defense. Upgrade all cards you can no longer heal. 999 gold to normality. We do have a shop in its space. Uh, two spaces, rather. So we can remove one of the normality there, but it always feels like if you have even one normality in your deck, that's one too many normalities to have in your deck. Way too early in the fight to be playing corru uh, Corruption here. Awesome. Dropping bombs. And... Hey, even gets killed with the Ritual Dagger. Hell yes. Calibers, if at the start of your turn you, or rather at the start of your turn, lose 15 block rather than all of it. Do like that. Probably not time to start taking more perfected strikes. It's too late. I'm going to go for the three here, just because I, there's so many good things here. Yeah, Master of Strategy. Sure, pre-upgraded. Another Master of Strategy, but we do have the Time Eater at the end here. Time Eater does some multi-hits that are really pesky. Uh, so Dark Shackles can be particularly powerful against those. Let's have a look at our next selection. Panacea versus Bandage Up. Almost certainly Panacea. Dark Shackles versus the extra draw. We don't have the energy to play that much. So. I definitely want the extra shrug it off. We just need the defense. Cards which exhaust when played will discard instead 50% of the time. That affects my ritual dagger. Anything after I play corrupt, uh, any skill rather after I play corruption. Panacea, Dark Shackles, Master Strategy, uh, Seeing Red, Feed, and Reaper. Yeah, we take the Stream Spoon. That's interesting. This is probably the first time in my. 1,260 hours of playing this game that I've ever selected to take that card. Just goes to show you there's always something new in this game. God, I love roguelikes. <laughs> Just so much. I'll even take the... Shrug it off there. Shrug it off? In flame. That limit break on turn one is actually really, really, really good. Let me go for the draw. Yeah. So he managed to kill the friends. Oh, yeah. Let's feel no pain in flame, panacea, and then just double reaper. It's not even going to kill the back line. Yeah, I don't need it to. True Grits in this deck, I'll be in a good position. I'm gonna go for the draw. I'm looking for more defense, see if I can find it. That'll do. Alright. Show me a card that gets better if I kill enemies. Hey, that's a feed. Although, the Perfected Strike will double play, so the feed actually won't even get the kill. I'm going to have to wait a turn. Wait a second, 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 wait a second. Didn't I... Yeah, I exhausted the Ritual Dagger, but didn't it come back? It did not. Okay. So I just need to kill this turn then, right? Yeah. Just not getting the kill with feed. Whatever. 
Nanchiku, every time you play 10 attacks, gain two energy. That's perfect. Another pre-upgraded in flame is also really great. Uh, we double play attacks a lot of the time, so Nanchiku is obviously going to be particularly powerful for us. Dark Shackles in the opening hand here is actually surprisingly good, I think. The enemy can do just multi-attacks, which the Dark Shackles would be particularly powerful against, but this works too. Okay. Panacea Berserk. So now I don't even get affected by the vulnerability. I just get the extra energy. Still really got to leave that red tool dagger in my deck. And I don't want to change the enemy's intent there because I had no way to change it back in case they decided to... Beautiful. Uh, turn to the intent where they start putting a curse in your deck. Or they just do put a curse in your deck, rather. Like that one. Beautiful. It's exactly what we needed at the very end there. And now, yeah, feed for the lethal. Hell yes. Essence of Steel is what... Well, not perfected Strike. I'm really feeling like if I had have gone with the memes and just gone with a Perfected Strike, maybe we would have made something of it. But it's too late to be thinking that. Playing Berserk anytime this early in the game would be fine for us, I think. Oh, but we did get Panacea, so... There's very little good argument in not playing the Bludgeon there. Do I play the Corruption to cycle through my entire deck as quickly as I can? I can see the argument in that. Yes, but I don't play anything that's non-essential. Okay. Right, I should play every other viable card first, then Reaper. I didn't want to play the clothesline first because I want Reaper to get the double uh, the double hit. It's just a giant heal for me right there. Unfortunately, this does mean Limit Break will exhaust. But that said, only 50% of the cards that I'm playing right now are actually exhausting. Pantograph at the start of boss combat seal for 25 HP, as well as Barricade, yes. Juice your bracelet, normally in normal enemy encounters are no longer in canon question mark rooms. I'm gonna recall right now, just so that I know that I've got that ruby key with me. <laughs> I've made that mistake often enough recently. Vulnerability doesn't matter to me. The effect of this enemy dying is not an attack. So that's the only thing I was really worried about there. It's okay. We've got that. And then that. Easy. Double uppercut is hard to turn down, though. Hell of a load of status effects on turn one. All right. Good art. 45 incoming. Hmm. Certainly a number. <clears throat> All right, here's our response. We draw and play Reaper for a ridiculous amount of damage. The only reasonable way to respond there. Gosh. Ooh, but Ritual Dagger upgrade? Yeah, we'll do it. Ritual Dagger being upgraded is really good because 50% of the time it just goes back into the discard pile and then it comes back out again. True grit, beautiful. 
He's looking for defensive stuff as well. Uh, we'll smith in, get the barricade upgraded so that it's easier to play. Magic Flower, healing is 50% more effective during combat. It's... It's... It's ridiculous. It will amplify the healing from Pantograph. Uh, it will amplify the healing from the Burning Blood. And it will amplify the healing from the Reaper during a combat. It will save my life. Uh, with no exaggeration. Pretty easily. Oh my god. This is our first turn? Okay. Okay! Wow. Yeah, I'll take that. 15 strength on turn one. Yeah. Just casually. I don't want to double up on Reaper right now. There'll be better times for that. I'm going to play Pommel. I'm looking for a zero. Nice. Mm, not great, but... Eh, okay. I just didn't want to have my follow-up turn be only playing one card. And Asya will... Double uppercut. And just true grit. Eh, some defense, but... Okay, we're now desperately looking for the Reaper that I... Errantly threw before. So I only get to play three cards this turn. It's okay, because I only want to play three cards. It's uh, Sword Boomerang, then Double Bludgeon to kill. Pretty good, right? To thump, to thump, to thump. Now, I have no clue how we kill the heart. In fact, I uh, suspect strongly that we don't. Unless we get Corruption, Impervious, and Barricade really early. Uh, we heal upon entering the boss fight by a ridic- Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll just smith here. Upgrading that corruption is actually pretty good for us as well. Shop will have nothing we can purchase. <laughs> Brimstone would be absolute suicide. Uh, funnily enough, the heavy blades that I issued earlier in the fight are now ridiculously powerful. Oh, well. Oh. Okay, thanks. Strange, but yeah, no, I'll more than happily take that. <laughs> Definitely not limit breaking right now. Yeah, I'll corruption, because I've already got the ability to hold everything that I keep. Hold everything that I keep. Hold all of my stuff still. Stuff. Ugh. Rain is not saying the right words, but you know what I mean, I hope. I've got barricade, so I keep all of the block that I'm generating. So I'm not just wasting a bunch of excess value here. Awesome. Not a huge fan of the fact that like all of my strength is at the bottom of the deck right now. Oh, literally all of my strength. Hey, what's up? Because I really wanted all of that before I got to my Reaper. That's okay though. Oh look, it's my Reaper. And now I like am obliged to go for the bludgeon so that I don't take any incoming damage. Motherfight hand when we play a power card. A random card in your hand costs zero for the rest of the turn as well as another bludgeon. Uh, that's really good for us. Just really good. That Dark Shackles. Oh, that's too early to lose Dark Shackles. I can't play Berserk now either. I'll play a defensive card first. Mm, there's the Barricade. Feel no pain. Barricade, feel no pain. We still haven't played the Corruption. So we're good on that front. Twenty-one damage in order to take one myself. Okay. Go. I think I'm comfortable with that trade. I 
I think I have to play the corruption. I think if I don't, I just end up losing. Oh, I think I probably end up losing regardless. But this gives us at least a fighting chance. I really do want to throw the double clothesline here to weaken the enemy. Knowing that they have a couple upcoming turns that get pretty frustrating. Uh, seems like a good idea. I'll also actually use the Reaper here for the full heal. I wouldn't usually throw it that early. But it felt essential. Also, we ended up getting it back, which is lovely. Unfortunately, it now costs zero, so it's not going to double play. That's my bad. Uh, that's actually something I was thinking about when I picked up the Mumpied Hand. If it makes something that I want to cost zero cost more than zero, I'm going to be in a bad position. Okay. This is the perfect time to play Berserk, at least. Alright, halfway through the enemy's HP here. This is... These are the turns, though, that really get you. Enemy's still weak, so it's not like that's going to help us. Should have just doubled the bludgeon there. I had an extra point of energy that I didn't think I was going to have. Where'd that come from? Oh, Berserk. That makes sense. Oh, my God. Limit Break didn't exhaust the first time. That's ridiculous. It actually might turn out that I was correct, accidentally, uh, in using the double clothesline earlier, because it enabled me to remove the artifacting from the enemy, which enabled me to get the vulnerability on them, which enables me to do that. All right, Ascension 15, heart down. Like it's nothing, like it's nothing. Like I wasn't stuck on it for a ridiculous long period of time, but that's okay. Second run in this episode did it. My name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spire. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. <sighs> not a bad run. As pessimistic as I was the entire time, not a bad run. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we will see you next time.